Oh, I think we're live. Yeah, we're live. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, Sports Car Safari podcast uh, episode two. We're here with, uh, obviously, co-editor Luke Jaxer, uh, myself, uh, Andrew Coles, and joining us this time, we have Andy Sarandis, Sarandis, Sandwiches. <laughs> Sardines. <laughs> Sardines. Welcome. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good. How are you? Very good. Thanks, Very good. Thanks for having me. Just, so no just worries. for everyone out there, can you spell your name and pronounce it properly? <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy. It's Sarandis. <laughs> S-A-R-A-N-D-I-S. <laughs> no apostrophes, punctuation in that. It's no, just, I've as had a, that before, but not, yep. not needed. Yeah, yep. good. <laughs> I must, I must admit, it, as most good memes do uh, on the internet, I um, I didn't quite understand the jokes because I've I've never really found it a particularly challenging surname. But uh, oh well, that's uh, that's good. So anyway, um, yeah, well, welcome, Andy. Um, those of you uh, in the Australian motorsport community are uh, probably familiar with Andy's various exploits uh, around uh, in both sides of the car um, as a, a driver uh, in improved production uh, behind the wheel of an immaculately prepared uh, Lancer Evo 8 uh, and as a co-driver uh, in national level gravel rally um, sitting in some some modern R5 cars and uh, uh, everything in between and uh, a day job as well, uh, managing Autosport, uh, the, the retailer in Adelaide that sells a lot of helmets and race suits and race equipment and gear. So pretty uh, pretty well embedded into the into the motorsport scene, we'd say. So uh, yeah. Yeah, do a bit of everything. Um, <laughs> sort of can't get away from it sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's been good last few years, especially doing a lot of the rally stuff. It's, that's definitely added another dimension to things that I haven't had as much of previously. <laughs> but yeah, certainly um, it's nice to be able to tick all the boxes in various areas. So I guess one question I did have, how much of your time is uh, is spent? Like, well, how much free time do you have? Because I've noticed you know, follow you updates on social media and it seems like you do all of the prep work on the Evo yourself in terms of engine builds and outs. And and obviously anyone who's maintained a competition car knows that keeping it at that standard is is almost a full-time job on its own. <laughs> Then, then you add in the co-driving side of things with um, obviously the prep to compete at that level is an incredible amount of planning and and and, and preps and that. And then obviously, you know, working full time as as well. Um, and I believe you're involved as well in you know improved production from an from a sort of an organisational standpoint too. So yeah, how, yes. how do you fit it all in? <laughs> it, it gets busy. Um, there's definitely some times of year where you you go from the shed and straight from the shed to home to get on a plane and go somewhere, but. Um, yeah, it, it still works too bad. You've got a little sort of prep regime, I guess you do before meetings. And to be honest, I haven't actually driven my car all that much the last couple of years. So that's <laughs> probably made it easier as well. Um, you know, I've done a few bigger events rather than doing series or anything. So mm -hmm. the plan was this year to try and do all the four more state rounds. But obviously, uh, the uh, well, coronavirus is uh, part of that. That might be uh, might be an easily attainable goal at, the, at this yeah. stage. Yeah, but, uh, uh, one, but, uh, yeah. yeah, look, I, it certainly keeps me busy um, mm. from an involvement point of view with improved production as well. I'm currently club president for the South Australian Club, so mm. there's sort of always something to do going on there as well. Be mm. it, you know, um, you know, organising events or other bits and pieces. But mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it's, it's all part of it. You, you know. I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. So. <laughs> so what's improved production racing, just for everyone out there who hasn't actually heard of it? You're so, crazy as one, but... <laughs> <laughs> where have you been? Um, <laughs> uh, look, it's, it's basically production-based cars that were allowed limited modifications. So we're sort of in between production cars and, and sports sedans. So, you know, engine-wise, there's some freedoms and, and stuff, but in terms of bodywork and aero, they're very basic, um, almost basically a standard standard cars so yeah we, we're sort of australia-wide category um there's about 400 members i think australia-wide there's quite a lot so yeah it's one of the bigger bigger categories in the country and the thing I find um, interesting, because uh, if, if you actually, I was sort of reflecting on this, it has probably one of the most banal names for a racing series in the world, like improved production. That that doesn't mean, you know, you know, like, great, you've put some stripes on or something. But, but really what we've got, what you have, is a racing category where, um, you know, I, I was thinking about this, where 
you know, watching some of your YouTube videos and, and clips is, is that each of the different cars racing. So for those that don't know, you know, Andy has uh, an, a Lancer Evolution 8. Uh, there's I'll that. just bring that up. Hang on. Yeah. So people, Pictures uh, can, can see. Um, you know, there's Datsun 1200s. There's, you know, S13 Silvias. There's, uh, you know. Yeah. Absolutely everything. But but what I find fascinating about the racing is that the individual uh, strengths of the cars uh, come through in the races. So obviously, uh, you know, every race start that you have is basically driving, swerving off the, the grid between cars that, that, that look like they're parked cars because you have that traction. Um, but then, you know, Ray Hislop's V8 Falcon sort of gobbles you up on the straights. And, and yeah, but yet the racing remains so com so close and competitive yeah we're all right. limited in some way obviously i've got good traction being a four-wheel drive car but all the turbo cars in the category have to run a restrictor so mm -hmm. which goes in the front of the turbo and that that's a sliding scale now off the weight of the car which has helped a bit cars yeah. like mine yeah. uh but yeah look everyone's got advantages that you know datsun's way nothing but they've got leaf springs in the back of them and <laughs> they're only running a yeah. 205 tire so yeah there's definitely a i think an art to each you know, each car in the category and each one's got its own strengths and weaknesses. And that's why the racing's so good because, yeah, like you say, ra race cars are jet in a straight line, but, you know, you mm. can make up, make it up in other areas to sort of hopefully achieve the overall lap time is <laughs> about the same yeah. or quicker. So I guess as well, like, you know, you know, I guess improved production shot to to global fame. And I mean, I was in the U the UK here when um when you guys first raced it at Adelaide's Clipsal or Five Hundred race uh, as a support act to, to what's now supercars. And um, I find it's 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 funny because you know the, these big events that we have in Australia, you know. South Australia, Australia is a bit of a bubble, and you think that the Clipsal was this huge event, but then you come to, to Europe and America, and no one's even heard of Adelaide, you know, let alone let alone that event. But yeah. but those YouTube clips, those clips, they cut through the noise, and suddenly they were being shared on Jalopnik, they were being shared on on Autoblog, all the big websites. It went around, and I had my mates in the UK coming to me saying like, "What's what's this improved production? <laughs> you know, well, what is it? And, and, well, and where do I was, where do I start? Like, you know." It was arguably the most exciting racing of that event. Yeah, you well, know, I think yeah. if you look at view, if views are to, to go off, it certainly was. Um, yeah. And I mean, even look at you know someone like Jordan Cox, who obviously had mm. the clips from from both Clipsal and then Bathurst that year as well. And yeah. his his career has basically <laughs> gone from you know strength to strength from that. Well, he's and doing TCR now, isn't yes, he? Yes, yeah, he is. Yeah. So, and, and look, yeah. to be fair, very good driver has earned his spot, and deservedly so. But I think it's a good, it's a good story of someone who genuinely is a fast driver. And I think you could probably take the top five or ten drivers in IP and and put them in a TCR car or something else, and they'd probably yeah. be as competitive as Jordan would be. Um, I yeah. think that's a, a good good reflection on the category as to how good the the level of racing is. Yeah. So, what was it like that that the race at Adelaide oh, that time? That's just ticking the bucket list thing. I, I think for battlers like us to be able to go to something you've dreamed of being at since you were a kid. I mean, I've been going yeah. since I was, you know, ten, eleven, something like that. Um, and you know, go along with dad every year, and and to be able to go there and do that yeah. event and drive on the same track, and and then let alone all the the coverage post that with TV or whatever, it was, yeah, that whole weekend was just a crazy, crazy experience. That's for sure. Fantastic. And um, yeah, I, look, I hats off to you because I, I you know, to be able to drive that hard on that track where, where one error is going to result in a seriously damaged car and, and for you to walk away from that a couple of years in a row with, with no real major damage. Cause I know there was a lot of, there was one year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe <laughs> slightly, more, <laughs> slightly more damage the, uh, the second year than the first one. That was a weekend that hasn't been one of the better ones, but um, what happened in that? So do you want to explain the story about what happened? I'll, I'll yeah, find so, some pictures and bring it up. I, I qualified third in the, I think, and, and started the first race and, I had Ray Hislop and Chris Brown in front of me. Uh, Which were also excited you got yeah. third place. That and also, that's, so that's what a, a V8 Falcon, BA Falcon yeah. and, and an yeah, 86 so Toyota, to put that in has. perspective, yeah, like Ray's mm. Falcon's 700 and plus horsepower car. Um, yeah. Chris Brown's car is probably one of the top fastest cars in the country. Yeah. Um, we all qualified, I think, within about two tenths of each other, which for IP wow. is quite crazy because normally it's, it's a lot more spread out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was starting behind those two and it was like, right, I'm going to get the best start of my life and get out of here. And I did that. 
Um, yep. Unfortunately, my wiring for my fuel pump in the fuse panel didn't like all the curb strikes and I uh, <laughs> had the car turn off on me sort of end of the, well, basically just after the start of the second lap whilst leading. So uh, that wasn't wasn't brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, starting from the back of the grid in race two, I got tangled up into turn nine, probably being a bit ambitious under brakes. And, <laughs> and then, um, I'm yeah. I'm trying to find that picture because it's a good picture. It's like the, ma- the, the main like kind of crash yeah, well, uh, one of you guys took it, I think. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's just a massive bottleneck. I think it was three wide, mm. and I was on the very inside, and basically had nowhere to go. So, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. It's about the only accident I think I've had whilst racing. So I've probably been, that's, that's been fairly fairly lucky. So touch touch wood now. But uh, I yeah. just I just think it's such a fantastic story. I mean, a, a friend of ours, a friend of Sports Car Safari, Drew Milne. I um, mean, if Drew's listening today hi but i remember one one thing that you know drew raced formula ford for for many years and and i remember he had quite an old i think a van demon rf92 and he would enter the clips all you know that the the formula ford race there Mm. every year And, and his sort of point was was that you know and that really opened my eyes that okay motorsport's expensive that there's no way of getting around that but but a lot of this stuff actually if you really you know, are driven and are eager and want to do it, you, you can do it. And Drew was sort of saying like, okay, I haven't won, you know, a national championship, but I know what it's like to drive down the main straight on the Sunday yeah. of race weekend at Clipsal yeah. with, you know, 20,000 people in, in the grandstands. And I was like, that's something that not yeah. very many people can say. Like that's, oh, that's, and that's cool. That's like, definitely, I think, the, the massive mm. draw card. I'd always been quite keen for us to try and get into it because as a category, mm. I th- yeah, like you've been saying, the racing's great to watch. It's a lot mm. more interesting than some of the processional stuff that <laughs> was there this year. Um, but, you know, it yeah. was great. We had our president at the time was Jamie Weir and mm-hmm. I can't exactly remember how it all came about, but I think he basically wrote a letter or spoke to someone in, you know, in charge of organising the thing and six months later we were in. And I, I still remember mm. the call. He rang me and said, we've got in and it, that was the, <laughs> just that call was like a bit surreal like wow this is actually going to be a thing and then yeah you know we had to pick from i think we had 80 cars that applied to get in for about 30 spots so wow that first yeah. year was just yeah that whole the whole bars and every time that event was just a crazy crazy weekend yeah and and i remember like it, it's it's very good that it that it was good because i remember there was some concern at the time about you know the reliability of cars or that you know the, <laughs> the quality of drivers because it's a very unforgiving track you know designed for, for professionals and getting you know effectively amateur drivers to, to do it you know and, and you guys put an exemplary performance on it was it was none of those problems really it's, <laughs> so. it's funny you say that because it's probably the only improved production event to date where i think one car failed to finish the whole weekend <laughs> we had i think we started the last race with yeah one less than when we started the weekend which that wow. never happens. So yeah. um, it was. It was definitely. Uh, it was definitely pretty good. And look, even like you say, with with people, you know, having issues or whatever, and getting off the track, mm. we're the only category that weekend that didn't have a safety car, which <laughs> says wow. a fair Crystal, bit as well. At, yeah, the Adelaide Street Circuit is just yeah. like unheard of. Like, there's yeah. always yeah. a safety car. There's always someone that puts it mm. into the wall yeah. or blows an engine or something well, like that. Yeah, we the one car that didn't finish that blew an engine, yeah. he actually cranked the car in reverse on the starter motor to back it behind the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> car. so, yeah, it was definitely some special efforts to, to avoid that happening, which is great. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's fan- that's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, and, and then, of course, um, you've also raced at Bathurst, which is, which is again, something that, that not many people can, can say they've done. What, what was that like? Um, oh, yeah, scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd have to say, you know, been in a fair few cars and, and done quite a lot of events, but not scared myself too much. That, that place is genuinely intimidating to try and go there and then drive on the pace of the front guys. Um, yeah. It's definitely somewhere where you need laps and you need experience because it just you can't make up for that. I, I think I went... Yeah. A couple of seconds quicker between the race on Saturday and the last race Sunday morning, just from thinking about it and, and doing more laps. You just the more yeah. track time you can get there, the the better. Um, yep. And you know, looking at you know someone like Jordan Cox is a great example. Goes there and mm. just completely goes full send across the top of the hill. That's 
That's pretty ballsy, I reckon. <laughs> if any, uh, if anyone out there, uh, yeah, YouTube, we'll, we'll pop the link in. But YouTube, yeah, yeah Jordan Cox Bathurst improved production and, and and that those passing moves and what he's doing in in the yeah. little civic, the little Eg civic, you, you just shouldn't be able to, to do that um, no. and get away with that on so many occasions. It's a, there's a, a fair bit of. Um, kindness given to him on a couple of occasions from a few of the other guys as well. <laughs> if that was, you know, you try and do that in TCR or something, you'll end up over the fence and back down in the pits. But, but yeah. yeah. Was, that, was that the year that we were there, like together, or was that a, a different year? That was last year that I went. So mm. uh, you mean for me or for Jordan? Uh, that, that time where Jordan was like flying over the top of the hill. Because I remember- Might have, yeah. That. Might have mm. been. I have mm. a feeling I wasn't there that year. You might have been up there, but yeah, I was, I was um, definitely there for that one. Yeah, yeah, I was watching on the live stream that year, but yeah, it was it was great to watch. Yeah. The, best bit, the best bit was because uh, it was McPhillamy Park up the top of the hill, like hearing the the campers that were up there, the, you know, the crowd that was up there just going bananas for this little Civic gone, yeah. gone nuts at the top of the hill was the best. Like arguably that they were screaming much louder than um, what there was for the GT3 cars yeah. going yeah. around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I think, Andrew, do you remember the first time that we went to Bathurst in mm. 2014? Yeah, yeah, that and was a, a great so weekend. That was yeah. the first week I went to the Bathurst 12 hour, which, if nobody's been, like, you oh. just got to get there. Like, no matter where you are in the world, it's just a phenomenal yeah. track and it's a phenomenal yeah. experience. And, um, you know, good Australian culture, camp in the middle of the ground and everything, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, but that first year we went there, we, we cannonballed it overnight to Bathurst, which um, we'll get. Michael Busby on the on the line at some point. We'll get him on there. Buzz, if you're watching, you get, you got to get on here. And um, yeah. we cannonballed overnight. We ended up at Bathurst early in the morning. I think it was IPRA that was like one of the first groups yeah. that were on. Yeah. And we, we trekked up the top of the hill. And one of the things about improved production that was great was just the E85. Like it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> we were behind the cars coming into the dipper and yeah. we just got face full of 85 and burnt our eyes but it was just like the Kept best thing awake, <laughs> awake yeah. after yeah. overnight cannonball which is it's funny how that's changed it used to be avgas and now it's e85 <laughs> and you know i don't even I, have a meeting with that anymore you know i, know, I, I yeah, can still i have a uh, a memory and i know this this makes me you know probably feel old but i can definitely remember when my dad would run avgas um in mm. the alpha for uh, malala and you would drive out to parafield airport and you'd pull up at the fence and i remember this and, and the um and that the truck would drive over across the grass and and would literally fill your jerry cans up over the fence and you'd pay him in cash and you'd, you'd and that's how you'd got your avgas it's um yeah, uh, we're officially old now. You were supposed to keep that secret, I think. That was definitely some bootleg. <laughs> <sale ago. laughs> we, just went to, we went to OG Speed Shop, I remember that. But, uh, <laughs> Did you put it in the lawnmower though, Andrew? <laughs> Did you guys put yeah, it in well, the lawnmower? Yeah, at the end of the season, what are you going to do with uh, you know, a few litres of Avgas in, in November? Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, uh, put it in the lawnmower. No, I, <laughs> I, I think I think the world needs to, you know, I, I think there's a lot of new car uh, categories coming out now, you know, TCR, which, which has taken over. And I think improved production really is something that is very applicable in other parts of the world. Because, you know, what one thing I, I as much as I, I love international GT racing, GT3, like in GT4 and what I fantastic, brilliant. But there's a slight little twinge when, when you're at a race and you're like, a Bentley Continental GT should not be keeping pace with a McLaren 720S. Like in these, these <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it's just you know they're also so evenly matched and and it's great. But but those racing cars are not representative really of of what the road cars can do. Whereas improved production is is exactly that. They they or the cars sound different. They look different. They behave differently in the corners. Um and and they're all broadly speaking competitive. And and I think it's something that. That definitely in Europe and and, and the states, I, I think, definitely has a place. Um, it's, funny, it's funny you say that though, because mm. TCR, I went up to the bend and and had a look at you know when the round mm. was up and had a look at the cars. They're surprisingly very IP esque. They've got <laughs> they are, they, they've got a yeah. you know they've got a bit bigger wing and they've got slicks and they've mm -hmm. got a fancy gearbox. But if you look under the bonnet of the uh, the Audi, yeah, that mm. that's very much it looks like a road car almost and yeah. they don't have bespoke suspension stuff from what i could see it oh was, okay a lot of it was, you know wow. if you ran kw yeah. or whatever suspension yeah. but the, the actual arms and the uprights i think mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff is either spec i think all the rear brakes on them looked all the same but yeah they're actually very 
not modest in an unmodest way in a lot of ways compared to you know other categories that mm. we like three or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, it was kind of cool to see that and go, hey, these are actually not that dissimilar from a street car. Yeah. So, so what do you think? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, what's happening in the Australian car industry is 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 heartbreaking to see, but but really, t- TCR has. A hell of a lot more relevance to, to any sort of Australian racing than, than supercars does it's these days. Affordable. If you've got yeah. some money, you can afford to do TCR. Supercars mm. and I guess GT3 as well mm. has got to a point where you need, I don't know, a million dollars a year to do Dunlop series or whatever mm. it is. And whereas if you've got 300, which you yeah. know, would be nice if you did, but yeah. you know, there, there's people there with money yeah. that want to go racing. But you can't mm. get into those categories because it's so limited in what's yeah. on offer and, and the drives on offer. If you want mm-hmm. to do TCR, it's like buying an R5 car. You can yeah. you can buy one and you can just about turn up and and race, which is and a good concept. Gary Rogers mm-hmm. Motorsport, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. He pulled out of supercars and straight into TCR. Yeah. So. Look at That's, look at the grid size. That's a good yeah. indication as to yeah. the, and they're not all young young. Guys no. and girls trying to get it somewhere. There, there's older guys that have, yeah. you know, Michael King, who's an improved production guy. Yep. He's gone and bought a, a Hyundai and he, he's yep. going to run this year. So Fantastic. You know, it's affordable yeah. if, you, if you've got the cash there to do it. Yeah. And, and I guess as well, the thing I, I find if you're, you know, Renault Australia, you're, you're Audi, you're, you're one of these importers, you know, I mean, to, to run a supercars team, you, it's not the cars and the cost. It's you need a workshop, you need an engineering team, you need an engine development program, you need all of these very expensive things. Whereas if if you're a, you know, a, a medium sized vehicle importer and you can purchase, lease a couple of cars, sub it out to a team like Gary Rogers to run it for you, it becomes quite a, a good return on investment from a marketing well, sort of look investment. Look at Hyundai. Hyundai had mm. at the bend round, they had drive it like, People up there with i30ns and yeah. they had a display wow. that there was quite a bit of manufacturer stuff up there which yeah mm-hmm. it's clearly a thing for them where hey look we've got this car and it's it's racing on the track and it's not that yeah. different from from what's available on the road yeah. i guess that's quite similar to rally like one of my mm. vivid memories as a kid was heading out to kaipo forest and mount you know mount crawford cool. forest and everything and having a look around and being a young kid and going through the car park to get to the special stages and seeing a STI and an Evo and stuff like that, like early ones, um, mm. you know, they're very vivid memories of going through and being like, oh, wow, like there's a race car. Like there's the <laughs> car that I can see on the track, which is, you know, yeah. I guess part of the appeal of that and the broader appeal that I think is is getting a bit lost now with supercars and some of the other categories um, where like TCR and improved production is, is, is a great way to, I guess, uh, relate and interact with the racing that's going on? Well, I think a lot of the improved production guys, I mean, I, I this car that I've got now is my second car, I, improved production car that I've built. Um, first one was my street car. You know, I had a, I had a Toyota Sprinter I that I used that. to deliver pizzas <laughs> in and it got too <laughs> modified to probably really drive on the street and and I, I turned that into an IP car. And there's there's a heap of, um, mm. heap of guys, Chris Brown's car. There's a lot of cars that were all street cars and or there were things in the shed. Um, so yeah. Is that the? Yeah, that's one? Uh, that's not yeah, not that yeah. one. Um, uh, the eighty six. That that thing sounded glorious. And then of course he went and did um classic Adelaide in that with yeah, with so Busby as well. Yeah, Busby is, the rookie rally. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, top left. Um, top left. Up yeah, there. That's, yeah, that's not long after I had it as a straight car. Still, that was at All Japan Day or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, it ended up with a fancy 4AG in it and then I did a few I, I started doing super sprints and was like well what else can I do um, <laughs> and, and then yeah obviously IP came yeah. along and and I've ended up putting a two liter beams 3s motor out of a IS 200 Lexus Solteza for the Fantastic. international people um, and yeah it was a great little car um, yeah me and Buzz did the rally rookie rally in it and we ended up winning that here and ended up going and doing Targa High Country which yeah, that was that was the Adelaide rally so yeah, that was class, that was classic Adelaide, or yeah, Adelaide. What was it called? Targa Adelaide then. Targa Adelaide. Yeah, it was Targa Adelaide. Was, yeah, that was, that was the year that you yeah, guys right. did the showgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Second. So first. So it was two years yeah, of the showgrounds. Yeah, yeah. The first year I did the showgrounds as the just the sprint 
thing, like yep. as the, the mm. opener to the rally. That was when there was like twenty thousand people up trees oh, and yeah. And so so just, yeah. just to <laughs> interrupt. So so obviously rally rallying is is quite you know in the hills and spread out, and you've you've got to be pretty dedicated to to get out to a stage. And I highly recommend anyone to to make the effort to get out because it is just the best motorsport that is out there. But but yeah, they so they had the in the showgrounds they they mapped out at what a one point five kilometer yeah, course basically. and they the ran service it, roads between the buildings like, between yeah. the buildings and and it was it was a bit sketchy i was co-driving uh with guys standing in that event as well and it, it was a bit sketchy you know it was it was good fun but you know to, to a motorsport event in south australia you know four or five thousand people it, it would be classed as a as an overwhelming success and they had like twenty thousand people Fresh turned out to watch this they couldn't, yeah, they couldn't they put anybody in. people I remember I, I remember we, we were sitting in the pavilion because they had all the cars mm. on display and they were waiting to try and get us out. And we ended up like threading <laughs> through a crowd of people just to get onto it. It was ridiculous. It took like it was, 45 minutes just to get to the yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. You had to do this special path because there was yeah. so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us. I, so, I remember, I remember yeah, going, though, we were if you're listening. We need this. Yeah. Event we need back this again. <laughs> not, not the showgrounds just as a, a, yeah. a service park area. We need to yeah. go back and yeah. use yeah. it as a special stage. <laughs> I, I remember tearing. I was co-driving uh, yeah, with Guy Stand in the, the Fiat 124 uh, CC, the rally car, and we were we were tearing down that straight at the back of the showgrounds and you've got the big, big spoon drains and you're boom, bang, and you know, over and we're sort of belting down and there's weird cameras going on and because it's not designed to be driven at speed. And, it's, and then I remember looking up and there was people on the roof of some of yeah. the pavilions. Like they had, you know, this is stuff you see in Europe. You see it in Spain, in Portugal. You don't see this in Australia. <laughs> and it was just the most the most incredible incredible it's funny so. it's funny you say about those spoon drains so years ago when i was a lot younger and dad was service crewing um for a couple of the uh internationals there was a guy that came over from mm. i think it was from scotland he had a lotus cortina and dad had a lotus <laughs> cortina so he yep. wanted to service <laughs> and we they had the internationals this is the week before the event and they had the internationals stored at the showgrounds in one of the pavilions and we turned up maybe the Sunday, the Sunday beforehand, and we got there, and there was a guy with a Cortina, and there was another fella uh, with a BDA escort. It was a couple of escorts, and we got yeah. there, and they had one of the escorts up in the air, and they were bucking around underneath it. And anyway, so Dad jumps in this Cortina with this crazy Scotsman, and they go belting off down like that back where you would have yeah. gone down yeah. down the back yeah. road. Yeah. And they hit this spoon drain, which at that point was about a foot deep. And this thing's like <laughs> launched itself across the roadway, through the gate, landed like on the road still, still going along. He's like, oh, shit, I forgot that was there. And they were straightening because <laughs> the guys in the other car had just been down there and done the same thing. And when we got there, they were, they were straightening the sump guard up. So, yeah, it's, it's lucky they probably filled them in because it wouldn't have yeah. been much good otherwise. Yeah, that was um, – yeah, I, I think it just, just proves that, you know, you know, this motorsport has has had declining crowds and, and you know, these problems. But I, I think really it is just a matter of, you know, you hit the sweet spot of what people really want. You make it easy for them to come to and easy to, for them to compete and participate and you get that mix right and, the, and it's, yeah. it's 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 there. The support's there. So, um, so I guess it's an interesting segue into rallying while we're on the on the subject. So you're mm -hmm. one of the, the few people who, who can discuss competing at, you know, top – level national and improved production but but also co-driving so you know r5 fiestas r5 skodas with steve glennie some of the best yeah. drivers in australia um yeah t tell us how, how did that come about how, how did I've, you get I've into it well in that regard um mm. so i knew steve one through through work um was mm -hmm. a customer at the shop which we'll touch on uh, later yeah yep. and and two mm. i'd sort of been away quite a bit he'd obviously done a fair bit of um co-driving with ben calder um yep. and i'd been away to various tarmac rallies and, and service for, for those two because they're pretty entertaining to go rallying with. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and basically I think we were at the – it was for the Adelaide Rally, I think. We were at the Arkaba at the pre-briefing or something or mm. something anyway. We were there and, and Steve said, oh, I think, think I'm going to drive next year in the ARC. Do you, do you want to come co-drive for me? And I was sort of like, oh, yeah, I can't co-drive. Like, you know, not I, – I, me and Buzz had done – I think four events, five events, a handful of stuff. And he was like, I oh, don't worry about the notes. I just want someone I can put up with in a car. Like, you know, they get along with for a week. 
and, and it'll, be, it'll be fun. I was like, okay, yeah, cool, no worries. So yeah, that was basically uh, that was basically Which is wow. fifty percent of co driving, right? Not being a pain in the yeah. ass. In the- oh no, absolutely. You, yeah. You've got to get along, otherwise it's it's no point in being there. Basically, it's you know part yeah. of the fun is is having fun and doing the event. And mm. and being you know with someone locked in a confined space for a week, so but, yeah. But also, like you know, from a driver and a, and a co-driver standpoint, you, you perform better when you're relaxed and having fun. Anyway, if you're trying too hard to 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 you know overcome some tension or something, you, you're not doing a, a good job as a no, co-driver. Yeah, and you, you've got anyway, to like be like comfortable with each other, or just yeah, that yeah. dynamic doesn't work. Um, yeah, but yeah, like that that whole program that Craig Brooks put together, which was. Mm. Um, Subaru that he, he's put together, yeah. which he got Jason White, Pete and um, he's basically assembled the world's fastest service crew. I think, I think how many, <laughs> hate to think how many rallies have been together with him, but yeah, um, yeah. there's an amazing group of guys there that have a lot of knowledge. And that car, is, well, the current one's even better than the one we're in, but the one we're mm. in is amazing, um, compared to everything else at the time until the R5 cars come along. And and this is that that bright orange um, Subaru because you, you guys were carrying a bit of a weight penalty, weren't you? Versus the the factory car of Molly Taylor, is that, is that something I've heard? Is the truth to that? Or, or no? So Molly Molly had the weight penalty on us. Um, yeah. Oh, that, okay. That Subaru was actually Molly's old car. That was the championship winning car, I think. Yeah. Um, I think they took about three hundred kilos out of it. Oh wow! Which, okay, which I got was, that completely wrong. Yeah. No. So <laughs> yeah. that car was actually. The, nearly the lightest thing in the field. Um, and there was actually a competition, I think, between Craig and Neil Bates to see who could be the lightest on the scale. So wow. he's which, which is pretty funny. Um, was something in there about why he's eating his welding helmet, but I'm not wow. I'm not sure what that story was. He never ate it. So, <laughs> so how, did, how yeah. did that that season go? What, what was it like stepping in? Because most most, oh, most crew drivers sort of start at the bottom and gradually work their way up. And by the time you get to compete at national level, you, you're pretty well versed in what you're doing. Um, yeah. But you're sort of going straight into the frying pan. Like, how was that? Yeah, so <laughs> my introduction for that season was I did Targa Northwest with Steve in a uh, Buckby prepared um, STI, so similar car, but yep. a tarmac version. And it was basically like, see how you go with this. And then we'll do Targa Taz with no recce. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then go from there. So I think I did Target Taz. That was my sort of practice. And then we went a week later from there to Perth and did the first round of the ARC. I missed the first round because I was doing Clipsal because he'd done Ballarat. Yeah, but um, yeah. it now, was a pretty big learning curve. <laughs> yeah. Well, Andrew, I mean, I've been to Target Tazzy. I've service crewed for Guy and yourself, but I've never mm. actually driven or co driven in the event. Mm. In terms of baptism of fire, Andrew, what level is that on? It's um, it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big, steep learning curve if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I, I went down. I've done a bit of co-driving. I, I would not hesitate at all to say that I'm experienced by any stretch of the imagination. I've done a handful of events, you know, and, and had a lot of fun. Um, and obviously, there's a big delineation between myself and Andy. You know, when when Guy Stan and myself go out, we're going out purely to have fun and, and to to enjoy the event. Andy's going to to win, um, so there's a very big difference in approach there. But but I found um, Target Tasmania. It's a long event. It's six days. Um, there's a lot of driving. You're crossing the entire island state of Tasmania, um, and really, it comes down to fatigue management because you go down there, you do recce. The event doesn't start on day one. The event starts three, four days earlier when you you drive across, you catch the ferry across, you've you know you set the car up, you've got recce, you know, and, and fatigue is the big thing. And by sort of about day three, you start to to really get tired and and it's, and you realize you're not even at the halfway mark. And and that for me was the, the big one of, okay, we really, you know, I, I'm, I'm more like, no, we'll, we'll stay up. We'll, 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 we'll go have a beer. Like it's fine. But, but no, in Tasmania, you really do need to manage. Um, I think you actually said that to me. I think your advice was like, if you get a chance to go to bed, go to bed. Cause you yeah. just need every bit of energy. You can get. Yeah. And you definitely find yourself trying to sort of almost not wake yourself up. You're still awake and you're still alert, but that sharpness just drops away. Yeah. And it's really, really tricky, especially when you're you know going as quick as with Steve you do with yeah. Steve driving. Yeah. Um yeah, you've you've got to be so on the ball and the minute you drop five percent, you just mm. 
you're not, you're not there anymore. It doesn't work. So. I, I found the trickiest bit for me was was when we'd finish a stage and you'd have this, you know, Aerosmith or one of the, the great stages and you'd have this spike of adrenaline and you're on top of the world. And then you've got a, a 50, 60 kilometre transport. Oh. So, so the adrenaline comes down, you discuss, you know, you settle in and, and there's, there's no navigating to do it. It's just jump on the highway and drive for an hour. And then you start to sort of do these runs. You start to... To, to nod off and then you arrive at the, the start of the next stage in a relaxed semi sleep mode yeah. and you've got to then bring yourself back up to like okay you know big part of mode. it is trying to switch yourself on and, and wake yourself back up especially like what day is it a day drive from Launceston to Hobart and you go or no Strawn Strawn to Hobart, Strawn to Hobart. Yeah. Yeah. there's a transport yeah. there that is it's like an hour and a half and it is just dead boring yeah. <laughs> you're in this thing that's droning away and you're just trying to like oh come on hurry up and get yeah. this done but yeah it's really difficult when you do that you then go have lunch and then you've just eaten something and then go to go oh hang on now i gotta go wake up and yeah go switch on and read notes again yeah well, i mean even, even as like a support team for like service crewing even just trying to get around and oh, lug yeah. things around and you know mm. get from point a to point b let alone doing it at 10 tenths it's yeah. just exhausting in oh, itself. I still reckon the service guys have probably got it nearly as hard. You're, you're getting up earlier and, and driving <laughs> further and doing yeah. more. So and you know, so, you're yeah. trying to rebuild gearboxes overnight in, yeah. in a shed with no power. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, there's yeah. definitely no envy there. I, I think I'd still much rather be in the car. <laughs> <laughs> there was some. I think I like you know that for the service crews for, for those that don't know like. A lot of the the parts of um, you know western sort of southwestern Tasmania, there's there's not a lot of roads in, there. and the the roads that they use for the rally are often you know what's it? Is it Strawn? Is it Strawn? I think yeah, where right. where this, the the only road out of Strawn is the first stage of the day. Yeah. So <laughs> if so, basically, if you're a service crew, you're, you're either getting out at four a.m. before the rally starts at you know seven a.m. or or you're there until eleven a.m. at the end of the day. So there's every year you know people people warned us that that you know the service crew exodus out of strawn at 5 a.m is a bit of a mad dash of guys in sprinter vans loaded you know and, and everyone's just <laughs> you know and, and the, the event is like like a whole lot of small events within a big event and, and yeah yeah it's um yeah there's a certain white hot service van that is the fastest <laughs> thing in the country you could, you could put that on a stage it'd probably be okay i think yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. So, so you've gone from from Tiger Taz. You, you've done that, which you know, for, for a lot of people, that's the goal is to do Tiger Tasmania. How, how did you finish up in that first event? We how were second go? in the end, outright, which was yeah, pretty cool experience. That's, um, that's especially cool. in a little Subaru that they made weigh about seventeen hundred kilos for the rules, and they basically give you no modifications, and then you've got to go chase Vipers and Porsches. And, so yeah, it was. Um, interesting week but but good fun an amazing experience yeah. you can't you can't buy that at all so yeah and yeah in terms of experience of the learning experience of notes and and yeah. all sorts of aspects of it it was definitely a massive thing um but yeah mm. you can go to wa and, and go to gravel it's you're sort mm. of almost going to relearn because it's a lot of differences but also, I think, you know, you touched on the notes there. It's, it's worth mentioning for, for people that might not be in, in the sport. So um, I, I would say a, a fair part of the field at most rallies in Australia run on what's called Smoothline notes. So a company called Smoothline put together notes and, you know, that they are expensive, but they do save you money because you don't need to wreck you and write your own notes and they're bloody good. Um, obviously, what you might not realize is that Steve Glennie, is the person writing the smooth line notes. So <laughs> in terms of people to, to learn from and to, to sit alongside while you're learning, like you probably there's no one. Really yeah, I, better. I don't think there's probably a more qualified teacher around. Um, <laughs> mm. um, even just with a lot of people, it's funny with those notes you mentioned that because people say, mm. oh, I don't, I don't like this call or I, I take that out. And you ask them if they know what it means and they go, oh, no, not really. So then you, <laughs> you explain it to them or he, as he was explaining it to me as, so, as you do and mm. and they go oh, oh okay yeah that makes sense and then they sort of i think it's an understanding to get that mm. knowledge right and then you can use what's there so having yeah. him telling me all of that and, and he's still doing sightseeing mid-stage oh there's that that's that cliff i was talking about I'm doing this and, <laughs> oh, right, okay yeah so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah definitely yeah. a good, good teacher and certainly i think it's a bit yeah. of the learning process and and the you know that side of things massively yeah. So, so mm. you've gone in and, and you've, 
you've then done the um the rest of the 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 national gravel championship in the Subaru. How, how did you go? What what was that? that uh, so that was tricky year. We, where did we come? We come second in the end. Um, it was really close going into Rally Australia. There was ourselves, Eli Evans, and Harry Bates mm-hmm. that were sort of all in, in contention. I'm Molly, I think, even at that stage mm-hmm. for the title. Um, and we'd, we'd basically been battling all year to try and keep up with, with an R5 Skoda. And that was sort of the first real foray into the championship from someone from a serious point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, multiple like, as in multiple events um and obviously harry's car just got quicker and quicker and quicker the thing i guess at that mm-hmm. stage i hadn't quite got reliability in it um and yeah. that probably helped and this us. is the yaris isn't it that's yeah. the yaris yep yeah which yeah. obviously last year they got everything sorted and just went and yeah. just drove away from yeah. everybody basically. <laughs> just everyone um, yeah so yeah we were in a long wheelbase Subaru, if you like <laughs> compared to some of the other cars yeah. Um, and yeah, basically just trying to keep up and go as quick as we could go, which was definitely a challenge against those much shorter wheelbase cars, which mm. once you get in one and, and sort of see how they are, you go, okay, I see now where, where we're sort yeah. of losing time. So yeah, of, of how, course. how did you guys step up to the R5? Cause you've done that now. Yeah. So <laughs> we may have sort of bent Brooks's car a little bit, you know, like, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> so he was kind enough to organise an R5 for Rally Australia, which was, yeah, definitely a really cool experience. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, it was sort of a case of swap sides of the car because obviously you've gone from yeah. a right-hand drive car to a left-hand drive one and um, try and learn the whole thing and, and do an event, which, yeah, was fun in itself. So yeah. just, just just set the scene here because you know you, you can be honest as, as honest or as or as no you know vague as, as you like vague <laughs> as you like but you're you're at Rally Australia you're at a WRC event you're in an R5 car you're rubbing shoulders with all of the top drivers in the world did you just subconsciously in your mind go I'm pretty top shit right now. I think I've made it. <laughs> or like, because I would be going, this is pretty cool. Like, <laughs> no, I thought, you know, I thought when I did Quickstall, that was about as good as it'll get. And yeah. you think, yeah. okay, that's pretty cool. Get to do that event. And, and then to be at Rally Australia, I'm standing in a regroup, I think it was. And I've mm. literally got Sebastian Ogier standing next to me. Yeah. And I'm looking at him and he's sort of trying to avoid eye contact. Like, who's this weirdo? <laughs> uh, this, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah. You didn't giggle at him, did you? No, I didn't. I was probably staring like a weirdo. <laughs> you know, you know, one of my, the, the favorite thing I think I've almost ever read on the internet was, um, you know, that, that famous Bill Caswell story of when they rocked up to Rally Mexico in the E30 and, you know, parking yeah. alongside Loeb. And that's, you know, f- for those that don't know, if you search Jalopnik, Bill Caswell, you, you, you'll find this story. And basically yeah. they did the cheapest possible entry into a WRC event just to say they could do it. And then just to basically take the piss alongside all of the world's best drivers but you know it's kind of <laughs> that experience but you're in one of their cars playing at their level like on the same time sheets you know that's, that's, yeah. that's well i think even the, the uh, special stage it was they would have it on the foreshore there it's bitumen yeah. sort of thing they set up and we were one of the first cars into it because they sort of regroup everybody and reorder it for tv and yeah. so we went through and then it rained like it absolutely poured and i think we were fifth or sixth or something outright and we'd beaten Tanak and all these people. And so there's this screenshot with, with you know, Glennie and Sarandis with Tanak and then all these other, you know, all these other hacks, that, you know, who've only won a whole bunch of world championships. Don't have to know it was raining, but it's, yeah, it's do, do you have that timesheet printed and framed on your wall? Because I, I should tell you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and did, I guess, oh, I was going to say, did that actually... Spell your name right, though. That's the important. Yeah, they did. No, they <laughs> That's right. Mine's easy on that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 are the rumours, the stories I hear from the um the, the post WRC party uh, true? I, I've heard that that a, it, it's just a great a great experience. I'm, the, I missed the, out. Um, <laughs> I was that event is seriously the hardest thing I've done. It's harder than Target Taz. I got wow. to Sunday and we were leading at that point. In or I should say leading ARC. Yeah and mm-hmm. WRC2 or whatever, and I think we were in the lead by about 18 minutes because <laughs> Eli had, had nosedived on Friday, I think, and bent his car, mm. 
Uh, Harry's car had a mechanical. Um, yeah. And Molly, I can't remember, something happened. Anyway, mm. but, yeah, we were, we were ahead by so far. And it was like, well, we still want to keep going fast because we're in this cool car and we yeah. as well try. Um, but you sort of going, oh, don't stuff this up, don't stuff that up. And you just sort of trying to not muck something up because – you're that far ahead. If you, it's going to be a my mistake more than Steve's, that's going to cause a problem. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's definitely we did the power stage and we were at second car through, which was cool as well. Um, mm-hmm. And we got to the end and they go, okay, go stand in that media pen. Um, and so we're standing there and there's, there's various other WRC guys and then like Tommy Mack and walks in and the head boss of Toyota and all these people. And they're standing, same thing, they're standing, you know, half a metre away. Yeah. And even Steve's looking at me like, check, check out who that is. <laughs> and if, if you look at the footage from the WRC Live, when Toyota wins the championship, yeah. and they're standing there with their flags, and they're waving around, and there's these two battles in the background. Just going, yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it was fantastic. That, that experience alone is, just, yeah. yeah, I'll never forget that. It was really cool. Yeah. So how, how, how do you think, uh, you know, on that subject, I mean, my my take of the the situation and correct me if I'm wrong is is that Steve's with his talent. If if he was a decade earlier when there was proper manufacturer budgets and funding and and could have got a, a work right, wh- where would he be now? Like, does he have the raw talent and skill to sort of be up there competing on a an international level? And it's just sort of circumstance that that He'd has led certainly to certainly be out of any of the Australians. I would have thought yeah. up there with any of them. Um, I think he he just signed with Mitsubishi when Mitsubishi pulled out globally. So yep. he sort of just missed the boat, uh, unfortunately, because, yeah. yeah, who knows? Um, yeah. Certainly as, as good as anyone, I would have thought, that's, that's been in that level. Because I know, you know, obviously that the, the glory days of well, – not the glory days – that's a wrong term. We're in a good time now, but, but you know, you know, the nineties. You're not old enough to be doing that yet, Andrew. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the nineties when you had the factory Subarus and Mitsubishi and Toyota, sort of, you know, and I, I don't want to knock, you know, the legend of of Possum Bourne and Neil Bates and all those guys, but they were very, I guess, blessed in the fact that the, their careers sort of peaked at the same time that the industry was peaking, that the budgets were peaking, that mm-hmm. it was it was sort of on for young and old, and that generation of drivers that came a decade later kind of missed out on on a. Lot of those opportunities that that might it's just have so been much there. harder now. There's no opportunity in terms of look at the WRC field. What if you yeah. got yeah. eight seats for yeah. twenty something people that are all probably deserved to be there? Um, yeah. You know, you look at this year with how many drivers, Osberg and, and those guys that are not in a WRC car. Um, yeah, undoubtedly there was a lot more opportunity there in terms of numbers and probably budget on the table for people. But yeah, yeah I think. You know, you look at what Toyota's doing at the moment with Harry and Lewis. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, even up until this year with Subaru with Molly, um, you know, they're still, still there and, and still running a program, even if it's not on the scale of what it was mm. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So so then you um obviously you had the this the, the R five experience in the Skoda and um and then that then moved into into the Fiesta. So so you're you're in the M Sport uh R five Fiesta last yeah, year. I've been spoiled. Um and the plan is to do the same this year, but if we ever get to go, go rallying again. Um yeah, obviously um sort of got to know Luke through Steve. Steve had done a little bit of um well done a first few events. With Luke, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, I guess maybe not a lot of people realise with, with Luke. Luke started, I think his first rally was the Tiger Northwest that I did two years ago. Oh, wow. And so I think wow. I'm pretty pretty sure that was his first event, like full stop, yeah. and that was in a focus, you know, like road car that's been converted. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's I think he's done an amazing job of stepping up to that plate to be somewhere yeah. near those guys there. Mm. That level is, is definitely not to be underestimated, I think, in terms of <laughs> how fast people are. Um, mm. and, and look, anyone even in the ARC that's sort of top five or six is definitely quality, quality speed wise. Yeah. 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 So what what's it like at an R five? You know, I mean, is it is it as good as we all think it? Would be. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, it has to be that good. There's yeah. no way it can't be that good. I think mean, it's they're not fast. Like they don't have a lot of power. They're mm. probably I don't know 170 kilowatts, something like that, and no torque because they're a little engine. Mm. But yep. they're just so efficient. 
there's no, like the Subaru, you come out of a corner and there'd be a bit of a delay as it sort of tried to scrabble for traction and get going mm. up the road. Whereas an R5, it's pretty much just no drop. It just, it's constantly accelerating. And yeah. the way the gearbox is set up in them and they're, they're very short ratio and yep. they just they just keep accelerating and the, the sort of the direction change in them is absolutely ridiculous. They swap ends. They will spin if you jump on the wrong brake, the, on the brakes in the wrong spot. <laughs> as, as demonstrated by us a couple of times yeah. <laughs> fantastic and, and how are they to, to, to run you know is, is it a you know a very intensive car to, to run and maintain or are they actually pretty, they, pretty good they're very reliable if you do the maintenance it seems to be um, mm-hmm. they're not cheap to actually maintain in terms of dollars per kilometre yep. um, certainly compared to a you know, group N state level car or something like that that yep. said, compared to probably anything else running in the ARC, like a mm-hmm. like Brooksy's car, for example, mm-hmm. they're probably not significantly different. It's, yep. it's relative to it's big dollars for a state level car, but for something yeah. that's national series, it's it's probably um, yeah, it's probably to be expected at that cost. Yep. yep. Well, I mean, one of the things that I kind of noticed about it too was um, yeah, they just fast in fast out cars compared to those like you know the standard subarus that you guys were running before and stuff like that they're just so quick and it was actually really good um at adelaide rally last year to see one on tarmac because that's something we don't really get often in australia is the you know tarmac car fast stuff that's always Mm -hmm. usually reserved for gravel so that was really cool to see them out running about and and getting a bit of bow roll and throwing some hurries and stuff like that John O'Dowd's car, which did Adelaide Rally yeah. last year, that was, that was great. Uh, sort of mm. surprised to see how it went on the fastest stuff, which because I think they do, well, the Ford anyway does about 165 and the, or maybe 170, and that sort of runs out of, runs out of revs, and the Skoda would be much the same. So yeah. on those stages that have got 200k an hour plus stuff, you just get, you get destroyed. I think Monato stage here, which yeah. has got, I think we were sitting on the rev limiter in top gear on one of the strikes for the whole thing. And <laughs> then, like, Guy Tyler's in his Evo 7 doing 220 and they yeah. just by about 30 seconds that she yeah. was stoked about. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like, it was it was uh, around the twisty stuff anyway because I was out on stage taking photos for the event and the thing was very quick, like, mm. you know, braking, turning in, getting on the power early and everything. It was It was, like, right up there with the best tarmac cars around so oh, and they uh, would be um the efficiency of that of how quick they can change direction mm. i remember with we're in the subaru and we'd have a ripper stage and we go yeah that was, that was pretty good yeah. and you look at the time and and you're still two seconds behind eli and it's like oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and go, oh yeah i had an overshoot and i had to back up and go off here i thought really okay <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't yeah. quite that bad but, well, well speaking of the subaru we've got to show one clip we were lucky enough that we were shooting the event photography and we also had Sam from Racing Line Australia doing the video for us as well and uh, perks of being a co-driver sometimes. Getting oh, you're, talking about that. you're talking about that Subaru. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So many no. Subaru. There's just so many Subaru yeah. going on. Um, but yeah, yeah like Andy, you lucky Tell enough. the story. So, so oh, I, sorry, yeah. we had, like, that was the photo that we posted on the Instagram that was Andrew took that at the finish line of the event where Andy's got this just monster grin on his face. <laughs> I was laughing at Colson because <laughs> he's come up to take these photos of everybody finishing the thing and like come up and like that was cool. And then he's seen that I was driving and he's just like, You've just pissed yourself laughing. And I was just laughing too. And then you took a photo. But uh, yeah, we'll just quickly play that quick because that's. Um, Stage and obviously it's untimed and we you basically had to finish and I think at that point yeah we were second to John Island and the Viper and we we're going in and we we're talking about okay well you can you can 
one small clicks into the shocks and we'll wind the diff off and we'll do this and it'll go donuts. And Ben was just like, well, do you want to do it? And I was like, oh, okay, all right. Don't say no. So <laughs> keeping in mind that in the back of my head, the last time this car was used at a rally to do, which was Rally Tasmania, I had a bit of a tarmac special demonstration. This car was used by someone who I'm not going to shame on the podcast. <laughs> but he was attempting to do basically the same thing and, and it was fighting him to the point that it fought into the point of a gutter and it got a <laughs> and it may have been the back wheel. So keeping that, in, keeping that in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do donuts in your car and haven't driven it, but I'll have a go. And yeah, that was the end result, which good success, I guess, in the and we finished. So that was good. Yeah. And this, someone got it on video, which doesn't happen very often. Because yeah. <laughs> you, you were telling me, yeah, and you didn't hit anything. Because I was going to say, it. you know that that was a real test of um, a real test of of nerve there. Because you know, I would err on the on the side of look, this is a very very public way to demonstrate that I don't really know how to drive this car. So I'm just going <laughs> to just, just just let's just responsibly cross the line and, and have a beer and call it a day. And um, and obviously you approach that slightly differently and you were saying that you tried it on the, the first sort of 360 and it didn't really work and then the second yeah, one as demonstrated in the video i turned i tried to flick it in the first one and it just basically did a four-wheel slide and because it's the Subaru, it doesn't really have any torque i'm used to the evo which is a bit different and mm. so the second one the strike do the same thing i the shit out of it and drop the punch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Meanwhile, Steve is in the passenger seat of Ben's car waiting at the start line, yeah. ringing me, and my phone's ringing in my <laughs> leg pocket and on the start line. And he's just sitting there giggling and going, oh, I'm going to stuff this up. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I mean, like, I felt sorry for the guys who were in the tour group, like, running through there because, again, I was there taking photos and doing the video and everything and, and – listening to the crowd's reaction everyone coming through so when you went through there it was just like everyone went nuts because it was just good to see someone throwing some proper it's, rooms. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually a very oh. hard thing to do because unless you've done it a, a bit and you know how the car's going to behave it, you really i mean you know a, a lot of the guys in, in some of the you know the more road oriented cars you try and tip them in to do that and they just plow understeer and, and just washes all the speed off and then you end up kind of you know five meters from from the apex and mm. you know bit of hope of disappointment and yeah. <laughs> um, so to actually I, I reckon there was probably only a handful maybe five or six people who actually yeah uh, Darren Masters, i think did a pretty good job of it yeah, he did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of, there was a couple of good ones but yeah darren, darren did some proper helis yeah. too. Like he got who, that who was in the merc is that who, who's the white the wine maker jim was it Jim? Jim Barry in the Pagoda. Jim Barry? Jim Barry so he had a pagoda the white oh. pagoda and i remember seeing him yeah. at the loosest, um, loosest thing oh, in the, the rally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. I remember seeing him yeah. at uh, scrutineering, and like this old Pagoda rocks up, and Jim gets out, and he's all automatic, like, automatic, yeah. automatic. Yep. Yes, automatic. And mm. I remember looking at it, and it had fresh tires on. It. I've gone, oh, wait, he's putting new tires on it. Super cats. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, we'll see how this thing goes around. But when he got to that special stage, and he yeah. like single tire fire yeah. city. It was just phenomenal. I got a great shot of it as well. Like, yeah, like phenomenal. Except, smoke, except haze, your, your photo only shows the one wheel that was spinning, so it looks. Yeah, it was. It was I was on the perfect side. <laughs> yeah, the other side, it's, yeah. needs a new right hand rear yeah. supercar, but yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, that was. Um, three, you'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was just a great a great event, and and it's yeah, and it's and it's that finish was really good. That, that yeah. concept of having it right in the middle of the city. Once again, yeah. there was a crowd there, um, yeah. and they need to do that again because it was fantastic yeah. to have it well, smack. I middle. mean, like we've we've been lucky enough to be involved with the event for a number of years with Tim doing the photography and some video for him as well. And you know, given the fact that the motorsport festival stopped, I know that Andrew and I we were both like really worried that the um, mm. like the rally wouldn't be happening. And so when he he said that it was actually happening and was going on board and everything, yeah. it was great. Um, you know, we we were so happy that that the event went, and then yeah, to have that finish, um, you know, was just was fantastic. You know, to have in town again on top of Goodger Street as well, because Goodger Street's yeah. amazing every year yeah. to get involved with anyone. But mm. actually having some competition, you know, there for people to actually see and finish mm. there, and and everything was just great. And have the Stag Hotel again, you know, that was, that was always a good way to end the night. Having Can a I beer. Think, at the Stag. I think or not. 
on a on a wider spectrum, I, I think those events now, especially you know the Adelaide Rally, now ha- has have done probably more to secure the future of rallying in Australia than than just about. You know, a lot of people are working at this, but but I think by introducing those more attainable classes, the challenge classes and and the spirit tour classes, where where you know, because I know certainly, you know, ten five ten years ago, if you wanted to go rallying, you needed a dedicated rally car and you needed to commit your life to it, and you know, you couldn't have a car that that you enjoy on the weekend and do two or three events a year in. Like you needed to to go all in, and now with these these new classes, it really has lowered the bar to entry significantly. And I think we've already seen the number of people that start off competing in these speed limited classes and gradually sort of work their way up. And and next thing you know, they they're out competing in full comp and, and doing yeah, well, you know, series. A to it. That's the yeah. biggest thing that like gravel was really lacking. Um, mm. And that's something that it's really hard to do now you, you, because of all the regulations. Everyone's going to have Hans devices and all this sort of stuff. Which is really hard. hard. <laughs> Not for safety. Yeah. We all need them. But it's yeah. really hard from a gravel point of view to go from having your $200 gum tree special that you've done, you know, can't across type events in and mm. then go to step up to full stage rallying. And that's something that mm. whoever can solve that, you know, problem and get, get a some sort of progression through the middle They'll, they'll do well because it, it, it can't do the same thing that you do with Tarmac where you have those tour packety type yeah. classes because not gravel no one can see. So well, you know, <laughs> and you're not gonna you're not gonna have the Porsche Porsche Australia well, sponsoring yes. the Porsche Porsche owners yeah. to take their cars okay. around Cairo. And, and I think <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd want that. People love to see a whole bunch of yeah. But um, I think as well, I mean, the other barrier, I mean, I know that, you know, Southern Districts Car Club, there are ways you can get out. They have the, you know, the Rookie Rally, mm-hmm. Rally SA. So, so there are people trying to address this problem. But I think gravel has the additional problem that it, unless you have a dedicated car, it kind of does what you're in the car. Well, um, and, and also the safety aspect of like, I mean, tarmac as well, but gravel is just that, Little bit more, yeah. The corner speed's a lot slower in gravel, though. I think gravel's safer. Safer. I'd argue yeah. gravel, yeah. Safer. I actually think gravel's safer yeah. personally. Tarmac, yeah. I mean, look at how many tour cars end up in various creeks or whatever every year. Yeah. yeah, um, gravel, I think, overall is is a safer thing, and people don't mm. have as big a confidence on gravel straight away as they might on tarmac, and that's probably one thing that. The, yeah. the tarmac, in, you know, it sort of encourages people like, hey, check this out, you can go really fast. But yeah. gravel, you're sort of like, well, hang on, I don't know what's going to happen here. I might and not and, and cars it. these days, like fast cars are cheap. You know, it's never mm. been more attainable and easier to get yourself into a fast car. And the thing is, is uh, unless you've worked up to that, when they let go, they let go in a very quick, very surprising manner. And if you're on a, on a tarmac stage and, and you lose grip all of a sudden, like that, that becomes <laughs> a big problem. Whereas if you're gravel and, and you, you know, you, you've got more time to wash off speed into a corner and slower it. You kind well, of... Fight. You're in a constant state of slide as well, almost on gravel. Like you're mm. always moving the car, whereas you're not mm. often caught out by, oh, hang on, I've got no grip at all because you yeah. don't have a lot to start with. So, yeah, mm. Tarmac, you go from, like you say, you go from being, oh, this is all sweet to, oh, hang on, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, I think that rally is, is, is great because, you know, if people take out their, their weekend cars and they can, they can do some light competition in it and, and mm. they get the bug and I think it's fantastic. And, and I guess now when we're, you know, we're, we're doing this podcast because we're all, in our homes and we, we can't go and do that. It just, you know, that Adelaide rally, that, that sunset and having those beers and watching the rally cars come in and, and it just seems so far away at the moment. It just seemed like yeah. a, a distant memory of, of years ago. But um, yeah, yeah but well, that's was the last, that was the last rally event I did now I think about it. And yeah, it does feel like, wow. it feels like a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Even, yeah. even I, I was, you know, very lucky a couple of weeks ago where I, I was a bouncer in a, in a vintage sports car club trial in a Vauxhall 3098. And it's great fun. Absolutely <laughs> great fun. Like it's, it's fantastic. You know, you take these priceless old vintage cars and you try and drive them up muddy inclines, you know, and, and these, these, the, the value of these cars is crazy. And, um, and, you know, we, you know, our job, so we had the four of us and our job is sitting in the back and we, you know, you bounce up and down to get the traction on the wheels to sort of skip it through the mud. And, and we, we stopped on one when the, the, the divots were so deep on this mud track <laughs> that we beached the bottom of the car and the flywheel because there's no cover on the bottom of the and flywheel. that's the main feet because you've got quite a lot of... Yeah, it is. There's like, 
you know, yeah. shoot you know, more than a Land Cruiser yeah. wheel yeah. clearance. Not yeah. a ground clearance. Yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. little skinny wheels and this this poor Voxel, we we beached it um on on the in the middle of the mud track and it was like clay. You could barely walk around and we're covered in and it's pissing with rain and we're just dr- having a great time, like like, you know, just just covered in mud and some of it it was incredible. But yeah, we, we beached the flywheel into the mud and it stalled the engine because the flywheel there's no cover on the bottom of it so the flywheel you can <laughs> see where it's sort of scraped the top surface of the mud and then eventually it's gone <laughs> and just jammed it and then the cars just jam you, you hit the starter motor and, and and the starter motor just just doesn't even do anything because the, the, the mud is just jamming this engine up and we had to tow it out with the land rover and that but Anyway, that was a bit of a sidetrack, but where I was going with that was that was, you know, the last event I went to and and at the time it was still going ahead and and we it was a very small sort of out in the country type thing, you know, only a handful of people and whatnot and, and we did it. And even that two, three weeks ago now, you know, G- Gillian Carr, who I was talking to, she she was she was the one that kindly invited me along and we were just saying it just, you know, we had a, a pub dinner and we just both worked out that that was actually the last time that we'd gone out for dinner as well. It just seems like a... <laughs> you know, a, a memory of, of a long time ago. So um, yeah, being stuck inside really makes time go slow. <laughs> <laughs> very slowly. So, so I guess, Andy, at, at Autosport, how, how are you guys coping? What, what's the, what's been the, the impact? Oh, for you, it's a massive impact for us. We're so, obviously a business mm-hmm. that relies on motorsport and motorsport events to, to basically mm-hmm. um, you know, continue with, with what we do. So yeah, we, we've certainly found it a, uh, well, already even, and we I think I feel like we're only just getting started with what's happening. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing a big drop in, in turnover massively. Yeah. So those people who don't know Autosport, Autosport is... Well, explain. yeah, um, we, we're a motorsport equipment shop. Um, it's mm. been around for, what are we up to, 41 years, I think, this year, yeah. or even maybe 42. Um, um, mm-hmm. Started by a couple of brothers in there was a shop in Adelaide and a shop in Melbourne. Um, yeah. I'm obviously in the Adelaide shop, and that's the only one left now. But um, yeah, we do all sorts of things: helmets, suits, everything, down to Weber carbies, not barbecues. So <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so all sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't I haven't been asked for any Weber barbecues this week. I've been asked for everything else, but I got a guy ring up looking for a cricket bat yesterday. But uh, um, <laughs> Everyone out there is a bit bored at work at the moment. With yeah, uh, little customers just ring up and stuff, are asking, you know, what what size wetter kettle you can get. Screwdrivers and the like. So yeah, so we've we've obviously been yeah been involved with club level rallies, circuit racing, up to you know a couple of supercar guys. Todd Hazelwood, we've got a good affiliation with, and sort of always mm-hmm. work with him. And yeah, everyone in between. Um, so yeah, we're, we're obviously we're all still there. We're still operating and and. Come and buy some things. Yeah. <laughs> we, we some stuff. Well, that's you something I, I liked about Autosport, and I think Matt set you guys in good stead for the coming months of people being at home. But um, just having like a decent online store, it's really hard for mm-hmm. like an Australian um, motorsport place store to have decent online store. And one thing I really liked was like, you know, have the like the um, starter packs for people. Yeah. So if you did mm-hmm. want to get into motorsport, you've bought an Excel or you've bought a sprint car or you know something to mm-hmm. go on go and do some track days out at, out at your local circuit. They've got packages where it's, it's cams mm-hmm. approved, harness cams approved, stickers, helmet, race suit, boots, or, you know, few and far between. You know, there's a, there's a whole heap of levels mm-hmm. there. Which I think it makes it easy for just the mm-hmm. average punter who might be doing some work at home because they're stuck at home and <laughs> you know, they're still working, but they got some money to spend. And, 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 I, and I guess projects. I, and yeah, I guess it now it's, it's something we've, we've all seen that, I think right now people really need to, I mean, obviously everyone's watching their pennies. I know a lot of our listeners personally, I know of people that, that are losing their, their jobs and have, have lost their jobs and it's a very tough time coming up. But I mean, if, if you do have a bit of scare, spare cash and you are thinking of doing it, you know, coffee shops, pizza places, auto sport, local businesses, really send it their way right now because because these people, you know, we're going to get through this and, and it's going to be fine and life's going to go back to normal and we want all of these businesses to be there on the other side of this. Mm. Um, and, yeah, so... If you're if local you're, in Australia, buy from Motorsport. If you're local, <laughs> buy from Demon Tweaks. If you're in the UK yeah. and you're watching from the UK, buy yeah. from Demon Tweaks. <laughs> But yeah, like if you've got time and you've been thinking about, you know, plumbing in a new firebomb system, if you've been thinking about updating your belt, you know, do it now. Like if, if you're going to do it at the end of the year, bring it forward, do it now. Yeah, because, because that leaky speed flow fitting. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's, if you're going to buy something now, it's probably, to be honest, is the time to mm. buy it because not only are people watching their dollars, the dollar has gotten terrible. So mm. a lot of the costs will, you know, we're trying to hold as much as we can and, and you know, where mm. we can, we'll try and keep the pricing where it is. But un- unfortunately, a lot of, lot of areas, you know, probably 80% of our stock comes from overseas and, you mm. know, yeah. All the, the when the dollar drops by ten to fifteen percent, so yeah. unfortunately the prices change. So, look, we're yeah. trying to you know, trying to hold that as best we can, and at the moment, we're you know we'd rather sell things than not. So, it's it's mm. just more a case of turnover than anything. But yeah, like you say, it, it, that's I think for the next period to come, um, mm. yeah, that's certainly going to be something that, particularly in Australia, where where you know we're at the bottom of the world and. It's quite hard to actually get stock even at the minute. I, you know, we, we deal with a few companies in Italy and and mm-hmm. they're off this week. They've been trading up until this point to some extent. Um, yeah. But we can't even order to – like if I wanted to do an order today, I think I think they're back next week. But, yeah, a lot of that stuff's really affected and, and I think it will that will continue in not just our business but I think a mm-hmm. lot of different areas will be – it'll mm-hmm. be quite a tricky next, you know, period of time for everyone. Yeah. And, yeah, like we said, if we – if we all kind of try and look after each other as best we can, we'll mm. hopefully get to the end of it. Oh, well, we got through that. Let's go racing. Got through that. Let's, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I am convinced you're assuming we, we still have an economy left at the end of this and assuming, yeah. assuming we have a society. I, I think that, that when we get the all clear to go racing again and when we get the all clear to, to take cars out and start doing stuff, mm. it's going to be one hell of an end to the year. It, it's going to be It's going to be that, crazy. It's going to be yeah. insane. It's going to be assuming awesome. Everyone's- Dolls to rub together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I certainly hope you know from an improved production point of view. We mm. we were set to have round one the weekend just gone, and mm. we had our biggest field that we probably would would have had for several years out that at LR, and and unfortunately, obviously, that couldn't happen. But I hope mm. that everyone you know keeps their cars there and you know yeah. does whatever they need to do, and we get go out and yeah. knock over October and have a race. Well, if, you, if you're short of cash, probably a good thing to do is go and hit up maybe Kleenex or some other toilet brand, toilet paper brand for some sponsorship yeah, dollars after all that. Yeah, mate, they, don't, they don't need to sponsor anyone now. They don't need to <laughs> sponsor anyone. They're just going, thank you. <laughs> I had to go to six stores the other day because we, we didn't panic by at the start. We were just kind of like, nah, we'll be fine. We don't use that much. And then. Six stores. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's looking at the preppers. Everyone's yeah. looking at the preppers. We've laughed at them for the last 10 to 15 years, and now we're going like, uh, maybe they're onto something here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, will, uh, I will make mention, though, uh, hey, if you guys want to ask some questions, send them through on Instagram or put them on the chat. Oh, Andy, you're right to ask us some questions if people got anything about improved production or rallying yeah, or yeah, auto sport yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, 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 cool. So, yeah, I'll just browse through those for the moment. Yeah, Andrew. yeah. So, um. Yeah, we've got, got some questions, but um, yeah, it's just a, an, odd, an odd time that we, we live in. We've, got, we've all got a lot of time on our hands, um, but... Well, particularly know. in Australia, we've gone from being on fire and now we're, well, even from a motorsport point of view, like for me, obviously missed Rally Australia last year because of the cancellations with bushfires everywhere. Yeah. The first test day that I was supposed to do with Luke this year was still cancelled because of the bushfires. The second one was cancelled because it was raining so hard it was underwater. And then now obviously <laughs> we've got a virus and no one can go to anything. So it's it's just it's crazy. Yeah. Like you almost forget what motorsport was like at, at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely struggling with it. It's hard. I mean, the Goodwood live stream was pretty good the other day, though. Like, yeah, I was, uh, I was cleaning up in my shed and uh, you know tr- trying to get ready for the for the podcast again in here after doing some jip rocking on the ceiling and everything, and had it up on the projector while I was working. It was just great to see something on and some motorsport. I think everyone's kind of really pushing that throwback mm-hmm. memories stuff. Yeah, I had the 1986. Adelaide Grand Prix, I think F1 <laughs> shared this morning, which was cool. Like, like <laughs> twenty minutes of that before I went to work, that was that was a cool thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. that's cool. I, I think it's gonna it's gonna make us appreciate a lot because I know I'm you know in the UK I'm very lucky to, to go to all the Goodwood events. You know, I was supposed to be a member yeah, meeting last weekend. Dream, really, <laughs> yeah, it's been great. But but you know, ugh, this is gonna make me sound terrible. But but like you know, three Goodwood events a year plus the other stuff they do. I'm down there four, five, six times a year. And it does start to, you know, once you've, I feel terrible saying this, but once you've been to two or three festival of speeds, you know, you, you do get used to them somewhat. And now 
I really am kicking myself. I re- I think we're going to appreciate everything a lot more, like the simple act of going down and getting a coffee in, in town, you know, going to these amazing events, you know, that being able to go racing. Like I think a lot of things that people take for granted across the board, I, I hope at least anyway, we'll, um, we're all going to just really appreciate what we've got <laughs> a little bit more than, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I went to Super Sprint the other weekend just because it was – an event on you know like they cancelled the race meeting i was like oh hang on get on get on the internet what can what can i do that's on before you know everything shut down and yeah there was a yeah. hundred hundred people at this sprint and it was yeah it was crazy um everyone was basically doing a similar thing like, oh, let's get, let's do some motorsport before we're the shed for so yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely well yeah we've got some questions here from uh some instagram listeners out there um oh, sanjay's got one yeah cool um, so Sanjay, we featured in issue one of Sportscast Safari magazine. His pagoda, mm. did a pretty cool trip. Ended up doing, uh, he ended up doing an Adelaide rally, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He, I have a, um, I have oh, a copy here. here. I'll find the, the yeah, story. Let um, let me just bring you up. Hang on. Wait, yeah, issue two, actually. Issue two. Pretty cool. Um, Andrew's story, yeah, it was it was fantastic. So, um, well, hang on, sorry guys, we're getting a bit of a sorry. bit sorry, of a rolling we're... stream update there. Hang on, let's <laughs> just jumping around. Yeah, we have seconds while we work out this technical glitch at the moment, which is Andrew just hang on. The browser's just decided to stream uh, switch between cameras nonstop. So, oh great. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, well, as long as the audio is good, you can all just shut your eyes for a little while. <laughs> not a bit strobe at the moment. Hang on. You might have got a flash of that that pagoda. Yeah, maybe. Hang on. I'll just try and... The, techni- the technical issues. Yeah. <laughs> this is a new bit of streaming software. It's browser-based, so uh, obviously susceptible to issues like uh, everybody else. So... Um... Just but the proper it. software that everyone uh, uses is is very actually very expensive. So uh, yeah. here Absolutely. we are. Well, let's let's get going on the question anyway. And um, if our audio is good, I'm sure Andy can answer it, and everyone can just look away <laughs> from the screen for a minute yeah, yeah, <laughs> until yeah. Luke fix it. So, what was the, the question? Trying, uh, uh, yeah. So hang on. We'll try and do a couple of things at once. Hang on. There you go. You fixed it. Nope. Nearly. No, you had to. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think. Oh no. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna look hilarious. I can't wait. We to run know. a very tight ship here. Uh, make no uh, update, no judgment. Oh, that's good. Hang on. I wish there was a way with this software you could like just pause what was going on, but might be able to get it from the other one. If you just right. bear with me for two seconds. Actually, Sanjay, I'll give you Sanjay's question. Give Sanjay's Sanjay Sanjay question. We can about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Will we see IPRA, Improved Production Racing Australia, back as a support category anytime soon? You tell me. Um, Excellent question. If you all ring up the Adelaide 500 people and tell them that you would like IP back, that would help. Um, (laughs) We've we've certainly been trying. Um, Obviously, the last couple of years, we haven't made the gig. Um, There's a fair bit of other influence, I think, with that event as to what's what's put on and what's not. I think it was a bit disappointed, to be honest, going this year. I, I, I don't know. Did you go, Luke? Did you end up going to? I actually didn't. Yeah. No. No, this yeah. is the first time I haven't, uh, haven't gone in a while. So, yeah. yeah. It was, um, to be honest, it was almost disappointing going this year. Um, just the mm. crowd numbers and, and you, you compare it to, well, even a good example, you look at the crowd that was at the Grand Prix that was on that stream this yeah. morning from the 80s and yeah. it was huge and, you know, I think unfortunately the event at the moment's gone away from being a motorsport event. They're almost trying to run it like a fringe festival, um, and just need to get back to the fact that it's a race event and people go there for racing, not for yeah. off-track things. And you know, one one race an hour isn't really cutting it at no. that level. Um, no. So, look, we'd love to be back there, um, and I think certainly the category deserves a spot. Um, but I'm biased, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I don't, I don't really know what the what the solution is to to trying to get a. I mean, get I, a, but. 
I, I just think from a from a, a marketing point of view, the the reach, the social media reach that your improved production race has got internationally, seeing it from an international perspective, was far wider than any other category at that event has ever managed i think ever you know you know when when you've got jalopnik who you have literally millions and millions of website hits writing about these videos and sharing them and they're mentioning adelaide and and people are seeing the track and they're watching this video with the city in the background of the parklands like that if you're looking at it, you know, from a tourism board perspective of just an investment of, you know, money in, money out, you know, you know, whatever, um, th that's, that's got to be, we still going? Sorry, just a little bit of an out of there. Are we Sorry. still streaming? Yeah, we still got this issue though of rolling through cameras. Okay. So well, good, to, good that we're back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we never um, left <laughs> but yeah no i i, I think yeah uh, look no no disagreement at all from that aspect yeah. um i think unfortunately that may have almost been our downfall in some aspects because it, it yeah. stole a long life from other things yeah. um but yeah i to my i i can't see why we're not there um yeah yeah it's but, certainly it's excellent racing yeah Luke, how are we doing? Do we have another question or are we still... Uh... Hang on. I think I've just fixed it. Fixed hey. it. <laughs> well done. I just need to sort my camera out again. Um, so give me two seconds. Yes, there were some more questions. Why don't we... Um, one, one more question, Luke, well, before you sort the camera. One more question. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting... There. I'm just uh, bringing it up. I'm trying to do four things at once. That was a good one. Um, Gordon. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Love Gordon. <laughs> Gord's 57 if you want some lovely Volvo porn yeah. on Instagram at Gord's 57 he asked do you like meerkats oh, <laughs> that's yeah. the first question Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> they are uh, next question more serious note as Actually, a navi yeah what meerkats. I was gonna say you know if, if we're talking shout out to Gord's so, uh, you know Adelaide rally I, I was photographing at the, the jump on Mount Lofty summit and there's a photo circulating I think it was in our Instagram post of, of Andy uh, you know, in, in the WRX flying over. Gord's centered over that jump. In a road car with no cage, he got more air than probably 95% <laughs> of the competition cars in that field. Oh, yeah, and 100%. It, I and it didn't land particularly well. There was a bit of a bounce. Like, <laughs> it wasn't he just a didn't have Riga. We had Riga, so it was fun. <laughs> but yeah, got Mark, absolutely. Got Send any, anyway, yeah, just points. Um, yeah, so uh, he asked, as a Navi, do you build trust in your driver from watching them and knowing their credibility or through actual personal seat time? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you've, you've still got to vet some people, I guess. You know, you wouldn't go get in the car with someone who's crazy. I, I, I wouldn't, personally. But mm. um, you'd be surprised how much you can control of the pace of the car from reading notes. Andrew, you'd be able to attest yeah. to that. Um, yeah. You know, particularly with new guys, the biggest thing seems to be that they, they just, to go faster, you drive harder, and that's not, not the way you do it. Um, it's a good way to drive off the edge of the road. Um, so in a lot of cases with a couple of the couple of newer guys that I've been with, you've almost mm. had to tell them to slow down, and but they go faster. Um, mm. So I guess it's something you build up over an event, but, yeah, you you've still got to, I guess, have a little bit of a look at who you're getting in with to start with. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, he's actually got another really good one too that I thought was quite good. Was um, what was your favourite Targa? Oh, target target has, <laughs> has to be. That's the thing. That said, Lofty is pretty cool. Um, yeah. in, doesn't matter what car. Yeah, it's just a great stage. So Lofty's yeah. a stretch of road up in the Adelaide Hills where, where we all grew up and probably as young peak players and sometimes older drivers too, there's been some really good midnight punts through there at 10 tenths. Well, I think, I think so. And, uh, and to do that in closed road is, is probably, I guess, yeah. one of the greatest things I you think can do. The year me and Mike Busby did it in the, my sprinter, mm. it was I've never driven that bit of road that wet. There was a metre-wide river down each side of the road. <laughs> and we were fastest classic car up there, and I think we were, you know, ten seconds or eight seconds off passing him in his GDR at the time, and it was so <laughs> weird. Yeah. Uh, Corolla with like eight, 80 suspension, and, and yeah, we had a ball, but it got yeah. to the end, and I was like, okay, 
we can go home now. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think, I think but, yeah, Buzz has had similar comments about doing lofties. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave those stories to another yeah. day. But well, like, well, like, on, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah. Last yeah. yeah. I think, uh, you know, Felix, our friend Felix, if you're listening, Felix uh, made the point that if you actually looked at the, the result sheet of Adelaide Rally this year <laughs> and checked mm. off how many, like, Hills Bandits grew up meeting there on Saturday <laughs> nights late and have actually progressed into doing it legitimately on yeah. in events, which is great. It's quite like, a significant. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, uh, yeah. It's also it's funny, funny that stage because there's people mm. that are sort of, would jump five or ten spots outright on that stage <laughs> just from knowledge and, and going full send of that <laughs> particular road. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, speaking of Busby, uh, he actually had an interesting question and I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you and then I'll show it to everyone. He goes, uh, can you ask if he could recognise this at over 100 kilometres now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll hold it up to the camera because I don't want to go on it. <laughs> so that's a guinea what? fowl. The story, the story of this is we did Rally SA, I don't even remember, maybe 2013, and we were doing the honey cycle stage, and we've come up over a brow, and it's third gear, fourth gear or something, and it's like slid over over the brow, nice line, right at the apex, and one of those things is standing on the, on the apex and got vaporised. And I sort of looked up, I know, a guinea fowl, and then kept reading notes. <laughs> and he's wiped out, and we've continued, and nothing said. And he gets to the end, and he goes, How did you see that or know what that was? It's, yeah, it was a guinea fowl. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's been great great to chat and, and hear the stories i think i think you know motor racing generates these experiences and these stories but i think rally even more so generates these yeah. um you know you, you you go away from home with it with a group of people hopefully they're your mates and, and you're all away from home and you're all you know out on the road and and uh yeah some of the uh i know we've we've all certainly had um there's there's some good stories there that the parachutist down in uh down in millicent was a good one <laughs> if those listening but um you know um I, I'm not, I'm, it's not my place to tell that story. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but, um, you know, I think, I think that's, you know, you know, driving fast down, down roads is, is great fun, but I think it's, it's everything else that comes with it is, is part it's of it. It's basically like going away from the week and you sort of lose the driving, but you get to go away with your mates. And yeah. yeah. You're exactly right. It's, it's experience outside of the state sort of makes the event. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. yeah. I was supposed to be in New Zealand today with the Targa. So, oh. yeah. Wait, one one question. If, you know, a few few friends of, of mine and ours have, you know, there was seems to be a, a big Australian, South Australian contingent that was going over. This is the Otago Rally in New Zealand, which is one of the all-time great classics the roads over there are just flowing cresty smooth gravel it's, it's like a once in a lifetime sort of bucket list where, where are their cars now are they are they in new zealand are they halfway are they back or are they as far as i know they didn't they, they got really close but i don't think they yeah but i don't know they might be there. <laughs> yeah i think yeah. the plan though was leave them there and do some more events later in the year oh, okay. yep. yeah yep. i i think there was a container with three or four sa cars yeah, I don't know if it left. Okay, <laughs> lucky. Yeah. If it did, it's a good excuse to go over there and do something. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you good. done anything I in New Zealand before? I did the Targo. Um, oh, sorry, one of the New Zealand fellas. He's got yep. A BMW uh, E36 compact, I think it is. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, it had an engine failure on the second stage. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> One and a half days we did, and the review was good. So, yeah, yeah. I'd certainly like to go. For it, so. Yeah, fantastic. Well, guys, I think we've um, that's that's a show, isn't it? So, anything else anyone wants to add? I think it's been a great, great chat. Thank you, Andy, for yeah, for coming down. Yeah, it's been great.
But, <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna help you out. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And and I think auto autosport is, you know, not not just uh not intentionally just building this up, but I mean one thing that I've amazed is is in terms of like when everything's good. The, the time you spend in customer service versus products sold and dollars taken in, the ratio must be so far whack. Of, of, you know, people would come in and talk to you for like an hour and, and then spend $300 on a helmet or something. You know, it, it, that sometimes uh, <laughs> depends on some head. Mm. Part of the yeah. <laughs> but no, look, we're always there. And that's the thing mm. we're there for. That's the difference between us and an online store is that mm. you can come in and see myself or see Simon and. Mm. You know, hopefully our expertise will help you to make a decision on something or fit into something. I guess mm. that's the biggest thing the internet doesn't do is, you know, you can measure your head. Head's a good example. You can measure your head on your mom, but mm. some people have Google head, some people have round head. Certain yeah. helmets will fit those better than others. So, you know, that's mm. something you can't measure and can't really tell. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there, there's definitely some, you know, other aspects to it that I think, that the bricks and mortar shop can provide that a, an internet yeah. site. Um, yeah. And I guess, you know, I think people people understand that and, and you know, we may not always be the cheapest, but we, we try to be. But I think certainly mm. the advice is something that you can't pay for and, and mm. you know, we try and offer that where we can. And I've... I've it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I know. I've, I look. I've. I've always. You know. Luckily, I was. You know, when we were back in Adelaide, I lived around the corner, and I sort of was was great to to, to pop in and um and say hi. It was just a good sort of drop in spot. So um, yeah, it'd be good to see that continue. Yeah, yeah. good to see yeah. that continue. So we just have to stand a meter and a half away from each other. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. We had. We had other lives. Oh, but yeah, we did do some on the floor today just so it looks like we're sort of making effort. But you know, I, I think um, I think we're not that you know flush for a lineup of customers out the door. We're, we're not Centrelink at this point, so I think everyone <laughs> other than them is probably in a similar situation. But yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing what we can do to comply. And right. While they let us be open, we'll be open. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I guess we need to finish off with if you want to learn more at Andy San on Instagram. I think so. And <laughs> underscore Andy San uh, at Autosport on Instagram. You guys on Instagram? Uh, yeah, at Autosport Adelaide. Yep, yep, Autosport Adelaide. Luke is at Boxer33, B-O-X-R 33. I am at A-G-R underscore Andrew um, and at Sports Gus Fari. So lots to follow there. And um, yeah, thank you, everyone. For, thanks for your time. No worries.